Hi everyone, this is my part 2 video on simplifying trig expressions with um, trig identities, okay? So, I hope you watched my last video, and in my last video I talked about the Pythagorean identities the, um, and the fact that these other ones come from this main one, sine x squared plus cosine x squared, which equals 1, and I did a proof on this video if you are interested. And these two also are very significant, but they all come from this one. I just wrote that there for our assistance. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll start on my three examples. Okay, so our first example is 1 over secant x minus tangent x minus 1 over um, secant x plus tangent x. Okay? So, um... You know, this may look intimidating for some people, but it's not. This is just one thing, and the only thing it is, is a fraction problem. Okay, that's all. I'm sure you dealed with, have dealt with fraction problems before. And there's, that's, this is nothing more than a fraction. Um, subtraction problem, you know. So what you have to do is, you know, react as you would if you saw something like this, right? Um, so obviously we need to find the same denominator and we know that this, our denominator is gonna consist of secant x minus 10x and secant x plus 10x, okay? So what we have to do is multiply the numer of each of these pieces um, by you know, the opposite denominator. So what I mean by that is this. So if you're one, what you would do is copy your original. And you would multiply this side by this denominator. I'm not going to get into that because I would assume you probably know that. And you would do the same for this. Okay. And what you would do on this side is the same concept. Plus tangent x. Um, you would multiply each the numerator and the denominator by this denominator. Um, minus tangent x. You can, and what you do on the top, you do on the bottom, and the same goes for the other way. Okay, let's do quickly the arithmetic, the um, simplification. So if I multiply, actually, what I'm going to do is look at my denominator for a second. Denominator is, um, we got the two pieces, the two same pieces on each side, you can say, on each fra in each fraction, right, in the denominator. So we can just take one of these. Since we have a secant x plus 10x on each side, we can just take one of them. And we have a secant x minus 10x here, and a secant x minus 10x. So we can just take 1 minus 10x. This is our new denominator, okay? Um, this, all you got to do is just distribute this 1, right? So obviously you get here a secant x plus tangent x. And you have this minus sign, okay? Never forget that. I even confuse that. A lot of people forget about it. They forget about it, and um, it leads to major problems in their answers. So, 1 times this, secant x. But put it, I recommend you put it in brackets, okay? After you distribute this, put this in brackets. And um, because you need to distribute this minus sign, okay? And let's do that right now. So on top, you still have your secant x plus tangent. And if you distribute, you get minus secant x minus times a minus is a, is a plus. And you still have your denominator. Okay. Oof, okay. So we have a, let's look at our numerator. We have a positive secant 
and a negative secant, so obviously they cancel, secant minus secant, and a 10 plus a 10, which is just 210. That's our numerator and our denominator. I'm just going to dis um, expand this. I'm going to multiply everything out. Right like that. Um, and see what we get. So secant times a secant. That's a lot of lines. I'm just going to, yeah. Secant times a secant is a secant x squared. Now if I distribute, now if I continue, secant times a negative 10, I'm just going to do it here to show you something. Secant times a negative 10 is a negative secant x, 10x, right? And now I'm done with secant, so 10 times secant is plus secant x, x 10x. And this cancels, because a negative plus that same thing, it cancels each other. And you're left with 10 times a negative 10x is just negative squared x because you're multiplying it by, each, by itself. Okay, well our numerator seems, you know, pretty clean, but our denominator looks messy. That's not as messy, but we want to get rid of this arithmetic thing going on. So let's see what we can do. Well, what is secant? Secant x squared is just 1 over cosine. Okay, that's Secant, another way of writing secant, which is you know basically the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so we still have our numerator over one over cosine, and we're just rewriting secant squared minus tangent is just sine x squared over cosine. Hopefully you know that. And let's just see what we get. Um well, you have the same denominators, right? So you can just subtract across. So you will have cosine and one minus sine. Okay, let's see what this is. One minus sine x squared, that's actually, let me write that, okay. One minus sine x squared, that's one of your identities. That is a cosine x squared. Don't believe me? Right here. 1 minus sine x squared is a cosine x squared. Over a cosine x squared. And obviously you can see these cancel and you're left with a 2 tan x over 1, but oops, over 1, but it's just 2 tangent x. You can put this into the tangent, you can put it under sine and cosine, but I don't see the need of doing that, so I just left it in this form. Um, okay, let's jump into our next example, which will be fairly shorter. Uh, yeah, it will be shorter. So you, you have secant x tangent x over tangent x squared plus 1. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite secant as we know it, which is 1 over cosine x, right? And since secant is not squared, you don't square the cosine, okay? It's just x. So tangent is um, just sine x over cosine x. Correct? Um, tangent x squared, as we know this, as we know it, is sine x squared over cosine x squared plus 1. Since this is a fraction, I'm just going to put it under a 1, which it is. Um, let's completely simplify this. 1 times sine x is just sine x. Um, cosine times cosine is just cosine x squared and here let's see what we can do well we just have to uh, multiply this by the numerator and denominator by cosine x squared so we ha can have the same denominators and we'll be left with sine x squared plus cosine x squared over cosine x squared Oops. what do I do? And if I just go on this side, um, 
Well, look, we got the same denominators, so we can cancel that. And I hope you know that it's the main one, so I am hoping. Sine x squared plus cosine x squared, that equals to 1, right? Our major one. Sine x squared plus cosine, that's 1. So this can be written as 1. Why did I do that? Um, okay. So we'll be left with sine over x. These two cancelled, and this is 1. Which is just... Which is just sine. Okay, and that's the correct answer. Okay, I'm gonna do one more quick. Pro oh my! I'm gonna do one more quick problem right here. I hope you bear my unorganization skills. Um, okay, so example three. Now we have sine x squared minus tangent x squared over. Does that look like a minus two? It doesn't. It's straight. Over tangent x squared. And what I'm going to do here is give you the answer. Okay, so like I said in my video, I'm going to give you the I did one in my last video. I give you the answer, and what we have to do is work with one side, obviously this this one, and make this side match this side. So this has to reduce to a negative one, okay? And it might be kind of ludicrous because, you know, it's such a small little thing equaling this huge monster, but we'll, I'll show you that it can be done. Okay. so. We have sine x squared minus tangent x squared. We can rewrite this. Sine, we'll just leave it because it's a primary trig ratio. So we have sine x squared minus tangent, which is just sine squared over cosine squared. This is really over one, right? Over tangent, which is sine x squared over cosine squared. Multiplied by sine. Correct? Okay. So what do we got? Let's see. Sine times cos you know, you can um you have your own way of obviously dealing with fractions. I just have my own tricks and all that. Um but ultimately if you do this you will get sine x squared cosine x squared minus sine x squared. Because you're just multiplying this side by cosine x squared, so you can have the same denominators, right? And um, this is over cosine x squared. Sine x squared. And this whole thing is over this, which is sine x squared times sine x squared. Well, let's just sine x to the fourth over, I hope I'm doing this right, <laughs> cosine x squared, because you're multiplying, right? Okay, we got the same denominators here, we can cancel them, I'm just going to write it here, um, and you're left with sine x squared minus sine x squared over, well this is cancelled, and you're left with sine 4x, okay? And now, well look at this, we can factor this, right? The numerator, because we got, um, what do we got here? We got a sine on both, in both pieces, so if we do that, we can factor, yeah, we can factor a sine, squared and um, if you factor it divided from here you get a cosine minus well a one over sine x to the four correct okay so here comes 
this little thing. I want to simplify this. You might be thinking, well, something squared minus 1. It's the same thing as 1 minus something squared. And this, you might think, is sine x squared, a positive sine x squared, right? Because you might confuse it with this. This. But there's a difference between there's a difference between 1 minus cosine x squared and cosine x squared minus 1. Okay, there's a difference. And what I'm going to show you is this. I'm going to bring back the our basic our main for our main Pythagorean identity. Okay, we want to get cosine x squared minus one on one side, right? We got a one, we got a cosine, so we can just move things around and get that isolated. So if I just bring a one here, I'm left with sine x squared plus cosine x squared minus one equals zero, right? We want this alone. That's what we want. We want to know what this simplifies to. So I just move the sign over here, and I get positive cosine x squared minus 1 equaling negative sine x squared. Okay? So hopefully that, um, that made sense. Right? It's just a negative sign in front of the sine x squared. So this guy can be written as minus sine x squared. I'm pretty sure you agree. I hope you agree. Minus sine squared over did I yeah over sine x to the fourth correct and if I multiply this I get well negative sine x to the fourth over sine x to the fourth and what is that if you kind of think about it like this. You cancel this, but you have your negative 1. It's not just a negative, it's a negative 1. So you're left with a negative 1, and that is the correct answer. Okay, um, yeah, that, those were my examples. I, hope you, I helped you in any way, um, and I will see you in my next topic. Thank you for watching.